This is the Javon Blake story brought to you by Sagicor Group. Sometimes I think Tear us apart Are the ones that unite us And bring us closer together Whether it's life, let's keep on dreaming Whether it's love, let's find you dating Whether it's hope, keep on believing A message from Sajigor Javon Blake was the phenomenal and inspirational captain of the Jamaica College track team from September 2020 to July 2022. He's from one of Jamaica's roughest, toughest inner city communities, Waterhouse. But that did not deter him from becoming a rising star. The now 19-year-old is an academic high achiever and track star he has secured a full scholarship to an Ivy League university in the United States, Dartmouth College. And for Casey, he will take bronze. Javon Blake, we watch the clock. 148.58. Success for Javon was earned. The once fragile and shy boy was overlooked in the first half of first form by the then coach at Jamaica College. And so I came here and I was just being overlooked. I was not as developed as everybody else. I was so timid and shy and I thought that I'd come here and this guy would pay me. He knows me, so I thought he'd you know, give me attention or try to work on me. I couldn't do the drills, anything, nothing at all. And uh, you know, it, I did it for a week and I decided it was too painful. I, I was not being you know, invested in. It was just wasting my time and that this was not going to work out. So I stopped after a week and I told my mom that I'm never doing it again. After that rejection, he stayed focused on his academics until his second term in first form. Dwayne Johnson, his now coach, discovered him on sports day. I was at sports day. I was forced to run the 800 and the 1500 meters. And he saw me and he was like, <clears throat> why are you not an athlete? And I just thought to myself that, you know, I'm not an athlete. I, I'm, look at me. <laughs> I was not going to survive. So I blocked my mind. At that point, I blocked my mind from it entirely. Just the way he approached the race. He approached it with so much maturity. And, and with, because middle and long distance running, it's, it's, it's intelligence. And he actually approached it with so much intelligence. I was like, whoa. So I spoke to him after the, after the race and I said to him, why aren't you on the team? Why aren't you, why, why aren't you an, an athlete? Said, so, well, you know, when he opened his mouth and answered, I was like, wow, <laughs> you know? Um, and I thought to myself, hmm, it's a little nerd, <laughs> you know? But um, speaking to him and, you know, I started to develop a little rapport with him um, right there. He would have told me that he would have tried um, doing tracks before and he was rejected. At first, tracks just did not click for Javon. He wanted to stay focused on his books. He was hesitant, I guess because in his mind, tracks is not for him. Um, he's more about his books, and that's what he wants to do. And I, I was persistent, um, and I never let up. Um, I got his mother involved. It never clicked, you know? <laughs> it never clicked. Um, it never clicked. He was talking to a wall, he was talking to the wrong person. Like I said, I blocked my mind from it entirely. I was just, I was just demotivated from doing any physical activity at all. He took me and he was like, you know, you can achieve so much, you're doing so well in school and we believe in you and persuading me was never going to work. And so he went to my mom. <laughs> and because she loves track so much and she was like, go do it because you're not, not in our yard. Go do it and, you know, my father was a little on my, he was on my side. He was like, yeah, let him focus on academics and whatnot. And my mom was like, no, let him go do it. And I think it was really him persuading her. And then a little of her telling me, don't come home unless you go to training. 
I pretty much spoke to her and I sold the dream. I, I told her that, look, he seems to be um, smart enough to, to be one of those boys that will need to go to college after high school. So, um, you know, this is the pathway and she bought into it. Um, and she was excited about the opportunity that I sold her. Um, and then she pressed him and, you know, we worked together to ensure that he never misses training. At one point, I was being escorted from class. It was so extra. Like, coach would send a senior student up to my class just to get me. And I was like, what is this? He started to warm up to the ideas. Because, you know, when you're actually selling something to a, a child that's intelligent, you can't just tell them and expect that they're going to accept it. He started to believe, and it became natural for him to just come down every evening and, and train. The very focused young man came from the heart of Waterhouse. He grew up in an unfinished concrete structure surrounded by a zinc fence in what could be described as a lane where young men are often building spliffs on the corners and the sound of gunshots rang out frequently. Javon's grandmother, Ida Robinson, who has lived in Waterhouse for more than 50 years, said she couldn't sleep at nights. No, but again, at first, it was very, very bad. We have to, when they must see me, I have to do a watch. Well, when they come down the house, and then I walk and burn down people's house, we have to see them what I do outside. I watch if any fire go through us, we can't run, go grab them up. But so happen, that's not like that now, I go on. And when policeman come in and say, oh no, Tadu, it's so that they say, we have to watch for us, sir. Because now one of them, if you don't go in, you don't have gun. I say, no, sir. Now one of them, we have to say, no, go in. And as you go in, and come, as you go into a minute, and run out back again, we can't, we can't sleep. We fear the, the house of them, we pick them. Javon's aunt, Charmaine Williams, said there are still flare ups in the community from time to time. What house is very rough. You know, in the ghetto, things flare up now and then. You know, it calm now and then. A couple months down the line, things just flare up. Javon's baby sister, Nastasia Blake, said she hears the sound of gunshots and police sirens too frequently. Very rough. In the middle of the night, about 1 or 2 o'clock when I'm still up watching anime, I'll hear gunshots and our footsteps running through our police sirens. It's very rough. But they have nowhere to go. This is their home. This is their reality. Do all away, burn and grow yourself. So we can't let you. We're not rich as well, you see. So we don't have nowhere to go. And it's no good for ever get up and go in our next get up. So we just have to pray through it, pray to Father God. We yeah, ask him for guidance and protect us. It was proving to be difficult for Javon to get to training at the crack of dawn at five each morning in this dangerous community. Javon's mother, Shara Brown, had to ensure that he traveled safely back and forth from home to training. And it was a fearful feeling every morning. Morning time, the place dark. Me have a fella in 5.30, you know, on Shatan. Them rape people up this and them do a sort of something, man. I call him coach one day and say to him, coach, say, um, sir, you know, say, it not go work out because Blake could have reached home like uh, 9 o'clock in the night car training over 6 o'clock. So he's like, Mr. Johnson, you know, say, me can't follow Blake, me afraid things up, man. Them take away him like lunch money when me a game, man. So me that follow him like the ill foot and you have a little curve come round so by the time him catch us so me can't see him i must say mommy me okay man go on i mean at the dark them time me and him sep me and the father separate so him now go come out with me and me alone have to follow him you know i started to find out from his mother about the living lifestyle and the situation there and i said you know she actually broke down in tears um our second interaction um you know saying that you know she really want the best for her kids um, because they do very well in school and all that. And I said to her, look, um, let's put it this way. I am adopting this one and I'm going to take care of him going forward. So you don't need to worry about anything. Um, I said to her that if he is going to reach his true potential, I think it would be best if we move him out of Waterhouse. I'm not taking him away from you guys, but move him out of the environment so that he can be comfortable 
so that he can spread his wings and fly. From Blake leave here, Blake don't look back. Him come the year before and last year, two times Blake ever spent Christmas with me. Coach Johnson became Javon's second father because his parents were separated. The separation affected him badly. Well, at the time, I would have learned that um, both parents were separated, and it, it seems recent. Um, so one of the things, and although dad was still in his life, um, he was a little bit bitter about that. Um, and he felt like, OK, I'm being separated from both parents, and daddy wasn't so much present as he should um, um, at the time because of the, you know, the split. Um, but I, I provided for him that voice um, because he saw me every day. Um, and so I was there for him, counseling through a lot of things. Yeah, the father mash up and it kind of dropped him back. It mash up him meds and when I call him, he used to cry and he used to cry and say, Mommy, no worry yourself. Him and his father did kind of mash up a little while and it was so stressful, believe you me, but I still hold on. My all on high time. Shara herself was a star athlete running for her old age school and she wanted the same glory for her son. I used to do sports, I used to play netball and I used to run. I used to run for my all age school. When I used to run I used to get my trophy them because yeah, playing netball, going um primary and junior champs, I get my goal them and them look away there and I feel nice. Her stardom was short-lived. She got pregnant at 17 with Javon in high school. It crushed her dreams of becoming a star athlete for Jamaica. I sit the ninth grade achievement test and went to Dunoon. Went to Dunoon, I was doing training for the track and field and played the netball and then get caught up with Mr. Blake and then drop out of school at the age of 17 having Blake and he's like Father God me drop out of school and them take my twin did get pregnant before me so my mother kind of disappointed and he's like getting pregnant and me never really ready feet and me want to be the next Shelly and Fraser because me love running and my always I watch it so me always I say me want to be one of the track star them so kind of abandoned the belly you know and then it can't abandon again because it's true at the tunic and so so me i said i can't tell my mother me eventually did have to tell her shara now wants those dreams for her son the dreams she never had she hopes he can be the next usain bolt blake one day you are going to become a next usain bolt with a big foot the way you are from your little bit you're going to become the next UCN Bolt and I push him every me, me day. Whether me at work, I tell her a lie. My mother, you see, she's sick there. Tell a lie. Just for the wish part him there. Him father not really there every day. Anyway, sometimes I have to argue uh, too. Then, as me a big, big, biggest motivator, me there everywhere. Javon's father, Leon Blake, was not keen on sports of his son. He wanted him to stay on the academic path. We were always a bit split on the academics versus athletics part of it. Right? Um, as I said, his mother is more sports oriented than I am. Um, she, she loves these events from primary school coming right up. She'll always. Right? Um, so for me, based on the part that he was on academically, I didn't want anything else to, to deter him. I didn't want anything, I didn't want him to get um, sidetracked. Javon's grandmother, Miss Robinson, was not surprised that her grandson's running ability, as he was always a runner. Yeah, I know he could run. I know he could run. Just run, just run. Just a run, 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 run. I know I said running and I'm a seat. It's when the man and sister pay, it, when he commands to book, them know them book work, but sometimes them up there me in the light on and them and make peer nice and true. Me I say I wonder if them pit me there ramp out them sense though, Father God. I mean like, um, mommy I come, mommy I come. And the boy pull the gate and run out, cause I'm gonna get bin. Run girl left me, me I run him down by the road, you know. 
run me around them now. Me did just know. Jevon and Nastasia, my two children, they are gifted. However, Jevon's father and sister never saw him as a runner. It was a surprise to them. As they, we didn't even see him as a runner. <laughs> He, when he born, he was, he was small and chubby. He was a chubby baby. You put him to sit down, him roll over. Yeah, so him growing up now so slim, another shocker. You know, but he was always just a, just a nice, gentle boy. He was humble. A runner? Well, no. I know that he liked to run. And I know that he didn't want to run because he said it himself that he didn't want to run. It was too much. Wanted to just focus on his studies, but mother pushed him. Javon was not just an athlete, he was also a brilliant student. When he commands to book work, I guarantee Blake, him always want to come first. If he not come first, him cry. And it's all about him book. And if he not come first, him, him cry. So him, him always, if him even not get it and him see it, I never go to the teacher I said, Blake said this and I want to know how it go and I want to know where it go wrong. Young Javon was given a great start academically, but it wasn't easy to get him in primary school based on his Waterhouse address. I was trying numerous primary schools to get him in. As my mother and my sister would say, our well, family is big. And I have too much family. I go St. Patrick, I have too much family. I go Balmaji. I try St. Aloysia, I try St. Francis, I try St. Peter Clever, I try half a tree primary. As my sister would have said, she living at Alfredo's Road at the time there, so I use her address to try to get him in Dunrobin Primary. All of those schools. St. Francis, I would have like, Mommy, where get this a bright boy from? As me begin the work, him done it. We school him used to go and me I tell our school in Waterhouse. And them is like, oh, when we go like two weeks time for look on the board, him name is not there. So I was so frustrated and things. So um, after that, time's run out. I, I get it, make him attend the Agla Park pre um, prep. He was there for about three years. Then my daughter now leaving the, the basic school to go over, saying, so, you know, the money kind of climb up, I climb up. So I mean, eventually, I get him out of the tree grade now, came over St. Patrick Primary. No one was surprised that Javon won a place at one of Jamaica's most prestigious high schools, Jamaica College. It has the distinction of producing the island's most prime ministers and cabinet ministers. Sixth grade now, um, I'm dead here and I'm saying, Mommy, I go pass the JC because I always carry them um, up by the zoo. So when I pass in by, I would see that big, pretty blue school. I said, Mommy, when I take Jesus to another school, I go go in. And I said, No, I don't send him for the gun, beat him and kill him. I go send him go. A judge is our old man's boy. And he's like, No, Mommy, it's JC. I go go. And when I did here, I did here down by the road. And he would have said, Mommy, I'm here to do the exam, you know. I'm right at the school and I'm rub it out back. Um, I put JC because JC was like about third choice, fourth choice. Um, and the dead here, I said, You are. I know you tell nobody, say, we school your pass. I said, No, right, if I close, just come and tell me first. There was one of them teacher names, Mrs. Samantha Brown, and she came up on my phone, Shara, and Blake passed it, JC, and pure excitement over St. Patrick, and me say, me know him would have passed. Before him even sit the, the, the first two, him come home and say, Mommy, you know me I go get 95 in this, and me I go get him pencil out everything. It was always a school I wanted to come to. When I, when I was younger, I used to praise, basically just like, Oh, I want to be like you. When I saw like the blue uniforms walking around the place, it was so different. And for me, it was a little prestigious. It was prestigious. Javon was now at Jamaica College. But how was he going to make it without financial help? So he penned a letter to one of the fastest women alive. It's a quick start, and with it, she takes the glory. The great Shelley and Fraser Price, the founder of the Pocket Rocket Foundation. 
she could identify with him because she too came out of Waterhouse. So I'm from Waterhouse in Kingston and of course my mother had a difficult time sending me to school. I had track and field and I had school and I've always had the opportunity of making sure that I use track and school both to escape the situation that my, you know, my mother was in and being from a volatile community. While at Woolmers Girls School, I met Jean Koch, who is a past student of the Woolmers Girls School, and she invested in me. So did a lot of other individuals, you know, from my church community, from my school community, different persons who invested in my life. And I think that's where everything started, where I believe that if I give others a chance, like the chance I got, they too can have the opportunity to transcend their, you know, their circumstance and giving them an opportunity to dream beyond the circumstances that they're in. And that's how everything started for me with the Pocket Rocket Foundation. Shelley now helps children who are struggling in school and have the ability to excel at sports. This is now her passion. It was hard for me growing up to see where I was going and I wanted them and their parents to have the opportunity to forget about you know, the school fee, forget about the books, forget about the tuition, forget about the meal. And if it is that you need a laptop to, to continue school, we provide that. So you know, I'm really excited about the opportunities and the students that pass through the foundation. You know, we have a lot who have gone on to, you know, all of our students have matriculated to universities and are doing exceptionally well, not just on the track, but in the classroom. Javon got the scholarship and he made maximum use of it. He's from Waterhouse, so that's definitely a plus. But you know, in terms of scholarship and selecting recipients, you have to be so careful that persons don't think you're biased. So most times, I personally am not a part of the final selection. So when that is done, I go through the selections. And you know, it's exciting because a lot of persons are from our community and a lot of them don't make it out and the more stories of individuals from your community who you know it's dear to you and you know that the resources are limited the more we see escape the circumstances and you know excel you're excited about the possibility of more persons following that footstep and Javon has continued to excel not just in track but of course in the classroom and when I we have never had a problem with Javon. So one of our board members is also a part of their track team. So she's like one of their managers. So we get frequent updates on how he's doing and you know what's needed. And I've never ever had a complaint about Javon. Um, his report, because we get a report as well every year for the students to see how they're doing with school. And we also call the schools and check up on how they're doing in school. And you know, when we see what he's doing, I, I give you a funny story. When most of us, when we hear him speak, we are like, he's from what else? <laughs> because he speaks so well, he's poised, he's eloquent, he's a leader. So to have that representation for the Pocket Rocket Foundation, I count that as a blessing for us. It was really just my story. I wanted to title it Diamond in the Rough, I guess say that you know what I have been able to achieve all of this despite where I'm coming from and having similar backgrounds I, I thought you know that it, it was something to spark some interest and I'm glad it did it was received very well and I was just very happy. Shelley hopes the Javon story will inspire corporate Jamaica to help young Jamaicans so that they too can dream beyond their circumstances. I just continue to trust that God has a plan for him and that his story will inspire other Jamaicans, not just athletes, but also Jamaicans in corporate Jamaica to invest in our youths, in, in you know, crime-ridden um, communities and you know, impoverished communities, because I believe that they are your consumers as well. They're the ones buying your product. They're the ones buying your services. If you can, as companies, go into these communities and invest in them, you're looking at future leaders, you're looking at prime ministers, you're also looking at your probably workers as well in the future. So for me, I'm 
glad that I have the sponsorship of not just Digicel and Grace Kennedy and Nike, but so many others who just through their charitable donation, their individual donation to the Pocket Rocket Foundation, we continue to give Jamaican athletes, not just track athletes, but all athletes, the opportunity to dream beyond their circumstances. As athletes, students, you, you kind of need that extra money to do whatever, especially when, you know, my parents you know, have two children. Uh, what's, what's better than having to only take care of certain things for only one? So it was, it was received well. It really helped whether it was transportation or just anything else I needed that you know, could have fit in. And it really helped to, it, it, it was a breather. Now when I come in the morning and he's here training, He's always respectful, you know, it's good morning, hi, how are you, and we, we catch up always training, what you're doing, I remember the last time I asked him what he's studying, and he said, I think he said molecular biology, and I'm like, huh, what's that, and you know, but, so it's, it's amazing to have the conversation outside of, you know, track, just asking how you're doing, you know, what, your, what are your expectations, and congratulations on what you're doing, and it, it, it feels good to be able to be here to see him put in the work to see him leave morning after morning tired leaving everything on the track and knowing that he's in the classroom you know I remember I think a year or almost a year ago when COVID hit and most persons were online to know that he was still excelling he wasn't you know he didn't fall off that was just tremendous and it speaks to his focus and his determination to you know make something of himself and I'm just proud that I had the opportunity since I started training here at Jamaica College to see him work and to know that whatever it is that he achieves he deserves it. It feels really good to be here around an Olympic and world champion and I talk about it every day it's really great seeing her train and it is quite motivating to say the least you know somebody who gets up every day and to, to put their all here to, without complaining. Javon credits his coach not only for his achievements on the track, but also his academic work. The young academic has a 4.0 GPA, all with A's, with 19 subjects, 13 at the Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate level, and six units in the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examinations Cape. I really have to give credit to, to coach and um, the vice principal, Blake Williams at the time, um, who were the ones who, you know, like to set my schedule for it and to source resources and all of that to get me to do it. They, they, we sat down and we discussed goals and we discussed what subjects I wanted to do and what career path I wanted to go into and how best they could get the, the best teachers to, to help me through this or the teachers who were really just like passionate about helping me. What I saw in him was that he's brilliant. He, he has a beautiful mind, you know, and in my mind, I think that's a mind that you don't want to reserve and treat as a normal kid or the normal student, um, but to push it. Um, so in third form, um, Ms. Rudolph Blake, who I developed a relationship with, a working relationship with, because I realized that she, her, she and I would have shared the same vision in terms of helping students. Um, and so I would have sat down and speak to her and develop a relationship. And then she ran an idea by me that she was starting a HSB program for boys who are in like accelerated um, classes. Um, to get them to do HSB at third form and she was considering Jav Javon to be one of them and I said by all means um, so I sat him down and I spoke to him and I said look this is going to set you up um, if you are able to manage HSB at third form at CSEC level you're going to get more comfortable you're able to take on much more going forward and I said look you have a mind that I think you I, my goal was actually for him to get 20 CSEC subjects, right? But um, we didn't want to push the envelope in third form for him to do two because we were just testing the water. So we said, look, let's try the HSB and see how it goes. Lo and behold, he got a one, ranked ninth, ninth in the Caribbean and number one in Jamaica. Javon has secured a full scholarship to pursue undergraduate studies in molecular and cellular biology at Dartmouth College as I said, 
an Ivy League university in the United States. I really let coach decide what university I was going to. I know he's equally passionate and ambitious as I am, so I was really just leaving it up to him. He's been, he had been making all the right decisions for me at that time, and so I was like, you know what, just, just do this. I don't care you, if you think I'm going to, to grow here, then so be it, I'm going to grow because you've been helping me grow. Coach Johnson was now so much a part of Javon's family that even his parents depended on the coach for guidance. Now, Javon sees himself saving his teacher, Georgia Rudolph Blake, from cancer. Earlier, I wanted to be a doctor. I was going into neurosurgery. I, I thought, you know, I could help people. I, I'm passionate about bio and the sciences. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm also passionate about math and physics. I'm also very passionate about math and physics. However, when I, I, I you know, developed a relationship with Rudolph, that's my nickname for her, <laughs> Miss Rudolph Blake, um, I learned that her family has this history of cancer and that her mom died from breast cancer. And she had several cousins and uncles that also died from various cancers. And I just, I became scared for her, one. I became scared for her children and uh, I just thought that, well, I'm going to take up a microbiology or something in that field to one, to help persons who suffer through cancer, to possibly help her in the future if it arises, hopefully it does not. My mom died from cancer and it was a, it was a terrible 10 months. It moved from her breast to her bone to her brain to her lungs and by the time she died her eyes were yellowing so I figured it had gone to her her liver as well and so one of the things I always use that story to motivate the boys because I am comforted by the fact that I could have given her everything she wanted during that period if it was a test if it was medication if it was food supply if she just had a craving for anything I was just there to make sure that she was having what she wanted and I keep saying to my boys what if you were in my position and you could not give your mother what she wanted and so I use that story to motivate them. Being a country girl, 13 miles outside, of Man coming from 13 miles outside of Mandeville, to get to school every morning, it was, it was something else. But I saw that education was this thing that could move me up and out of the community, could put my family in a better place. So my thing is, get your education. What if you were in that position? Strangely enough, Mrs. Rudolph Blake and Javon's relationship started out with him thinking she was a bully. But it was Mrs. Blake and Coach Johnson that kept Javon on the straight and narrow path. When I met her, she was so aggressive. I was so scared of her. Like, if she told me to jump or to bark, I would. I think she was, you know, she was out for this guy in my class because he was, I don't remember what he was doing, but he just like brought out the wrongs out of her and first impression, you know, first impression sticks. And my first impression of her was she was aggressive and she was going to bully me. I am mean and I'm mean for a reason. Um, for me, if you're here, you have been given this wonderful opportunity. And if you're going to come here and waste time, I'm going to be angry with you. I'm going to be very angry with you and I'm going to be angry with you until you see your purpose for being here. I don't believe in going halfway. I don't believe in being mediocre. I believe in like, you get this opportunity, use it. Prime Ministers walk this campus. So why are you going to come here and waste time? She still bullies me though, but at least I know how to get around her. <laughs> I'm not all hard, I, I support them. What I just need is for them to be trying their best. Once you're trying your best, we are good. His priorities are very clear. He wants to be successful. And Javon believes anyone can be successful. I prioritize um, getting stronger, <clears throat> getting faster. I, I, I see the importance in it and I do it and 
it's it's not strange to me that I'm doing well at it. I, I I'm not a star for that reason, because anybody can prioritize once they're able to. They can prioritize and achieve the same thing. Javon is just like any other teenage boy. He loves his phone and social media, and has crushes. I well, I'm introverted, so I'm I'm mostly just music, YouTube, anime, and stuff like that. However, I, I need, I just need the right friends to take me out. <laughs> um, I know I have great friends whenever they take me out. They have to force me to get out, but if they get me out, then I can, I will have fun. Javon knows who he is and what he wants to become. I'm a pro dime to tell me, can't tell you. According to Mark Twain, the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. Shelley and Javon have shown us it's not where you come from, it's where you're going, your destination. That was the Javon Blake story, brought to you by Sagicor Group.